Welcome back, you delightful individuals. Welcome back to Thirst and Vanity. I've just realized that the new trailer for The Crow has, uh, has just dropped. Now for a bit of context, I grew up on the original Crow movie, uh, the Eric Draven, Brandon Lee version, and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was phenomenal. I can't watch it now due to uh, certain triggers in it that just make me so unbelievably furious that I uh, I can't really finish it. However, um, it is a it is a very nostalgic part of my life. It's a very intimate and and key part of growing up in the young gothic person that was young Val and Vane. And so, I have a lot of love and nostalgia for it. And the new trailer has dropped. And from what I understand, it's completely different to the original movie. Should I say the original movies? Because there's like four of them and a TV series. But it's completely different to that. And also completely different to the graphic novels. From what I understand, the writer is on board in the creative process of the new remake, not revamp, remake of the movie. I have already expressed on previous live streams over on Twitch that I am struggling with the aesthetic choices that have been made for the new Crow movie just based on this image. Like... As a point of comparison, this is what the original Crow looked like. And this is what the new Crow looks like. Um, yeah. They've had a lot of backlash over the image change. And I get the idea of them wanting to make it into a more modern interpretation of the movie. They're getting rid of the old long hair of the 90s goth, and they've gone for the short cropped mullet. They're stepping away from the old leather pants and tight clothing wrapped in gaffer tape, the long trench coat, and they've gone for nipple tattoos. Well, tattoos in general, but yeah. This upsets me. My personal nostalgic levels, because I... Yeah, I, I loved The Crow. I loved everything about the aesthetic, the, the whole dynamic of it. And I'm not alone in that. In fact, I have yet to hear a positive review about the new changes. I've heard middle-of-the-road, open-minded reviews, but never a positive review. Despite not expecting great things, despite the fact that I definitely have my very large apprehensions about it, and despite the fact that I genuinely do feel like the entire movie is being set up to fail because of how much they're changing, I am going to go into this with an open mind. All right, I'm, go I'm going to genuinely try and swallow my pride, swallow my personal feelings and nostalgia, and look at this from a completely neutral perspective. Understanding my love for, for the source material, but look at it from a unique perspective. Okay? Okay, here we go. What's the first thing you liked about me? I thought that you were quite brilliantly broken. You feel like my person? <laughs> you feel like my person. What's the worst thing you've ever done? Okay, we're we are we're not into <laughs> We're only into 19 minutes of this and there is a lot of colour going on. Like I it's iconically goth. It's iconically goth. This is extremely colourful for an iconically goth movie. Um, even the original graphic novel was entirely monochrome. It was all in black and white. So it's an interesting choice to have um, pink, what looked like prison uniforms. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> it was a decision. It was a decision that is made. Let's, let's continue and see how we get on. Okay, let's whip back a little bit and, and crack on. Because I do... There's some very interesting aesthetics that are going on here, okay? What's the worst thing you've ever done? I saw 
poor things. I shouldn't have seen any of it. Two seconds in. So I can see that they're going for a more supernatural vibe to it. Uh, that what's the worst thing you've ever done? I saw things I shouldn't have seen. That's not really a worst thing that you've done. But okay, I can see that they've definitely got the supernatural element of it that you can see a little bit more in the graphic novel side of things. And it it oh okay. I immediately the the thing that i'm getting immediately from this not knowing anything about what they're planning on doing with it within the first minute of this is that they're making it into a 15 the original movie was an 18 they're making it into a 15 i have always really really struggled with people turning movies into like an 18 franchise movie a uh, an adult horror movie and making it into a 15. And if it's not, then this is particularly mild. Like, the idea... Uh, maybe the this scene is going to be much more brutal, but from what I remember of that scene that we've just seen, um, with the, uh, the murder, or attempted murder, for those people that have not seen it, of Eric and Shelley, that doesn't seem anywhere near as brutal as the uh, the actual scene in the original movie and as i understand it the graphic novels is so that's a step back because the whole point of the crow is that the thing that ended the person's life is so brutal that the crow who carries the spirit of the dead to the afterlife feel so sorry for them that they leave, they bring the soul back. And that that is the whole mythos behind it. It's, it's like old Norse mythos, if I remember correctly, that it's the, the crow carries the soul from the dead to the afterlife. But something so horrific happens that the crow feels sorry for the soul of the person and allows them to stay on the mortal plane in order to act their revenge. That that certainly on appearances just seems like a casual murder, but we will we'll see. We'll carry on. Let's see how it goes. When someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. Sometimes something so bad happens that the soul cannot rest. Until you put the wrong things right. You were given the power of a god. But you're running out of time to save her. I'm gonna kill them. Every single one of them. Okay, why does why does the crow look like he wants to be the Joker from Suicide Squad? Why does he look like that? Why why does he look like he wants to be the Joker from Suicide Squad? Just like a really moody Joker. <laughs> He's wearing like super modern day rap style gangster outfits. There's nothing that they've taken the goth out of one of the most iconic goth series that has ever existed. They have taken the goth out of one of the pinnacle forming 
elements of like the entire 90s goth culture this was like a a classic within the cult of goth and they've taken the goth out of it they've taken the goth out of it and i'm really trying to watch this without prejudice and and there are some really as interesting aesthetic choices the uh, the bit where they were all underwater that bit i found really quite interesting i love the fact that just after i'd explained the whole thing about the the crow mythos they then explained the whole thing about the crow mythos so they are following that element of it they're still following the idea that it is the crow that takes the spirits and brings them back i genuinely love the fact that um they're bringing more people of color into it i i genuinely am loving that but <sighs> we're nearly two minutes into it and i'm feeling underwhelmed this feels like a trailer for a Netflix series, not a remake of one of the most iconic gothic pieces of media that has existed in the last half centuries. But let's watch the end of it. Maybe, maybe I can change my perspective, you know? I killed you. Yeah, you did. We have a problem. He came for us. First impulse. Anger. Stop. Stop. They've even changed the makeup. They've even changed the makeup. They've put him in a raggedy trench coat of some description and they've changed the makeup the most iconic things about the crow were always the long coat the long hair and the makeup they have changed everything but they've decided to keep the le the the least of the trinity of goth there F they've changed the makeup entirely they've changed the hair entirely and they've kept a, a coat, but a raggedy coat. And I suppose that might be towards the end of the movie, so maybe it's been through a lot at that point, you know, and maybe that's happened. But, ah, oh, that is... That is a choice. <laughs> that is a choice. I realise that I'm definitely extremely biased at this point because I, I have so much love. Even though I can't watch the movie now because of my own personal triggers, I have so much love for the nostalgia of watching it as a teenager. It just it just feels like he's trying to be a Batman villain. And I appreciate there's going to be like Suicide Squad elements influencing that. But like I can just see this being like a, a prequel to the Penguin movie. Do you know what I mean? Like I can see that. I can see it. This is how the Scarecrow was made. You know, like... <sighs> All right. We've got a minute. Come on, Val. We can do it. It's not anger. It's love. Look at what you've become. You know that love promises only pain. No idea what hell awaits you. No, I do. How many people have you loved? I'll never be alone. I feel for everyone involved in that production. I genuinely feel for everyone involved in that production because that it it's just set up to fail. It's just set up to fail. There is so much love for the original source material that anybody going to watch that movie is going to be disappointed. And I get the whole argument like they had with like Star Wars movies and stuff like that, where it's like, okay, it's the new generation. It's a new generation of people that are going to be getting involved with, with that kind of thing. And, and, and I get it. I understand that argument, but I just, 
I just think they're setting themselves up to fail because, because of how much love there is for the original source material. I think the thing that frustrates me the most is the fact that that doesn't have to be a Crow movie. And this is, this is something that I've noticed a lot in Hollywood, especially in the past like 10 years, is there's a lot of movies that come out that have an association to source material, old franchises, old media. They are playing on the nostalgia of an old series, knowing that it's they're changing enough of it that it's going to fail. It's going to piss people off. It's going to make people angry. It's going to it's going to fail. And it's unfortunately everyone that's working in this is going to be tarred with that brush. You were the person that ruined The Crow. You were the people that ruined X franchise, you know? And that that's really upsetting. And it's quite easy to see from that. I, I could genuinely, if nobody had told me it was a Crow trailer, if, nobody, if I had not seen any of the promo um, pictures, if I had not seen any of the, the, the hype around the, the Crow, or more to the point, the disappointment around what is to come with The Crow... I could have believed that was a completely different movie. That it was a, a new movie, target audience 15, based around the Batman comics and uh, even the Crow comics and what have you. Is I could believe that. And I think it would be an all right movie if it was just like, okay, this person, say, instead of got brought back from the dead um, by a crow, found a medallion that made them immortal or made them the, the they died or something like that they could have easily changed the angle to make it not a crow movie but taking heavy influences from the crow and it probably would have been a success people would have turned around and be like do you know what no i get it i, I see the influences you've taken here i see what you've done it's not the crow but you this is what you've been influenced by I could see that happening, but no, they are too afraid of things being shit at box office that they strong arm people into remaking stuff. This is the era of remakes because people are so, because the entire industry of movies is so afraid of doing things new, <laughs> which is the reason why we're getting so many remakes at the moment, you know? Uh, well, I have a genuine hope that I'm going to be horribly mistaken. I have a genuine, genuinely hope that it's going to be amazing, that it's going to be fantastic, that it's going to be worth... It's going to be worth the name of The Crow, the brand of The Crow. I feel like I am going to be horribly disappointed. I definitely won't be going to see it in the cinema, if I see it at all. It will be when it's free on one of the services that I already pay for. That's that's pretty much where I'm at at the moment. It looks like a Netflix movie. It looks like... Um, and nothing bad on Netflix movies, 110%, but it doesn't look like blockbuster Hollywood movie. It looks like something made for people to watch at home on their TVs, not going out to the IMAX, you know? So yeah, so that's... Um, a spontaneous quick view of the uh, <laughs> the new Crow trailer and uh, my view on it uh, overall. Um, thanks. Thanks very much for watching. It was an, an extra video I wasn't expecting to do, but here we are. Might as well throw it out there for your own entertainment. Friends, there'll be another video released tomorrow because that's when I am due to release my videos on Fridays. Stick around for that. It's grand. If you wouldn't mind pressing the subscribe button and the thumbs up button, that would be great and wonderful. And if not, then that's cool. <laughs> that's all right. However, yeah, if you if you would like to put in the comments about what you think about it, I would love to see, like, especially if you haven't seen the original Crow movie, I would love to know what your thoughts are on it and whether you think... Like, if you've got no reference for the source material, what you thought of it, that would be great. And um, get a, a completely neutral perspective on it. That would be wonderful. And if you have seen the Crow movie, I would love to uh, know whether you agree with me or whether you think it's going to be, well, a failure. Because they've set themselves up to fail, in my personal opinion, you know.
Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. All right. Until tomorrow, because that's when the next video is coming out. Don't do anything I wouldn't do, because if I wouldn't do it, it'll fucking kill you. I'll see you all later. Bye bye bye.